The Pope, of course, was taking a break from the two-week-long Catholic Synod, bringing together 200 bishops from around the world. Dr. Austin Ivory is a Catholic writer and the coordinator of Catholic Voices. He has written a biography of the Pope that will be published a little later this year. And he's in room, Rome sorry, to cover the Vatican Synod. Dr. Austin Ivory, many thanks for joining us on The World. We might start by playing a little bit of what Pope Francis said at the beginning of the Synod to get a sense of the scene that he was trying to set. Let's take a listen. You have to say what you feel the Lord tells you to say, without concerns of human respect and without fear. And at the same time, you have to listen with humility and welcome with an open heart what our brothers say. With these two approaches, we exercise our togetherness. And that was Pope Francis really encouraging a very free discussion. Do you think it opened the way for that to happen? I, I do. And I think what's happened here in the last few days has actually been quite extraordinary when you compare it with previous bishop synods, which I've attended many over the years. And there's never really been one as free, as, as free-flowing and as honest as this one. Uh, the Pope, as you played in that clip, told them, look, I prefer to have you arguing with each other openly. I don't mind if you come to blows. He didn't quite say that this time, but he has before. But get it out, you know, because he has great faith in, in an honest exchange, a free discussion, carefully listening to each other in humility. He believes that consensus will emerge over time. And do you think it's really trying to give voice to the people through these parishes to really allow the church to deal with the fact that they are living their lives very differently from the Pope's, uh, from the uh, church's teachings. Okay, what, what, one important thing to establish here is that this is a meeting of bishops. It's, and a lot of people have said, well, where are the lay people? Well, I can tell you where the lay people are. There are 12 married couples who are witnessing, giving testimonies in the synod. And in fact, each bishop's discussion begins by hearing from a lay uh, couple. And in fact, there was a, an Australian couple, uh, as I understand, has been very well reported, who spoke about the importance of sex in their relationship. Uh, and all this has been very important in allowing that voice. But nonetheless, this is a meeting of pastors. It's a meeting of bishops. It's not some kind of, it's not, if you like, allowing the, the voice of ordinary Catholics directly into the assembly, except through uh, these invited witnesses. Will it lead to reform, though? Because that's probably what the world's Catholics are looking for to a degree. Uh, I have an easy answer to that question, which is yes. But it's not necessarily the kind of reform that often people expect. So what is not in discussion here are core church doctrines and core church teachings. Above all, the indissolubility of marriage, the Catholic belief that because God's love for us and his grace, the help that he gives us, is forever. Uh, he doesn't break his promises, therefore we have the no, no right to break a sacramental marriage. That's Catholic teaching. There is no divorce, therefore, in the Catholic understanding of marriage. Nobody questions that. But what is in question here is how, first of all, we teach that, how the church teaches that, how we prepare people for it. And given that our wider culture now has lost a sense of what permanent marriage means and the figures, the divorce figures uh, and the cohabitation figures are really very dramatic across the Western world. Uh, given that, many Catholics are entering sacramental Catholic marriage with, if you like, a mentality informed by the culture. What implications does that have, therefore, for the Catholic understanding of, of valid marriage? You talked about the issue of sexuality that has been front and centre at this synod. Of course, there is this deep shame within the Catholic Church about uh, pedophilia within the Church, the lack of, uh, of action on that, and particularly whether celibacy has caused some of those issues. Is this something that will be in any way put on the agenda here? No, no. first of all, because uh, clerical sex abuse and celibacy are not related, despite the popular perception. Most, uh, most sex abuse happens actually within the family uh, by married people. So uh, there isn't a connection. Uh, sex abuse, of course, is an important issue, but it is being handled by this pope uh, in, in a different way, through a commission that he set up and so on. But nothing is going to be recommended concretely until the end, in fact, of October next year. That's when the uh, bishops will gather again, having had a whole year to mull on these issues and what's going to result from this two-week initial synod is a document which will be sent in fact to all the bishops conferences all 114 of them around the world and they will give input and they will give there will be further consultation that's what i mean about this being really a whole new process it, 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 it's 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 intended to mobilize to wake up to shake in the church uh, into uh, into action uh, and then but what exactly
exactly those concrete steps will be will not be clear, I think, for another year. Well, hopefully we'll talk again then. Thank you so much for your time. Nice to be with you.